We will now discuss the excretory organs in the next group that is Annelida. And in Annelida, we include earthworm, leeches, nerus. So examples would be earthworm, leech, nerus. And the excretory structure or the organ which helps are known as nephridia. Now these nephridia, they are of different types. We will see that a little later. Let us first understand the structure of this. So when we are talking of a nephridium, it has a funnel-like opening. This funnel-like opening is known as nephridiostome and it is lined with cilia. So this is the opening, funnel-like and it is known as nephridiostome. Normally this nephridiostome, it lies in the coelomic cavity. It leads into a narrow tube which is known as the neck. So this narrow tube is called neck and then there's a long tube which is highly coiled. So if we draw this long tube which is highly coiled tube, it is not like simple coil, it is very very coiled tube. We are just drawing a simple coil so that we understand the structure. And it opens out through an opening called nephridio pore. So here we have just shown it in the form of a loop but it is highly coiled. So this opening which is known as nephridiostome, it lies in the coelomic cavity. Through it the fluid gets filtered and waste is eliminated. This neck and the first part of the tube they are also lined with cilia so that the fluid which comes here can be conducted forward. When the fluid is moving through this tube, at that time absorption takes place. So all the filtrate, all the waste which comes here along with water, from here water and important things or important substances get absorbed. So what is collected from the body fluid is waste, water and other substances. So when the fluid passes through this, water, whatever is required, gets absorbed, important substances get absorbed and only the waste material reaches up to the terminal part of this tube. And this opening is known as nephridio pore. In case of earthworm, we'll talk about earthworm first. So here in earthworms, Three types of nephridia are present. The first are called integumentary. Integumentary nephridia. And as the name tells us, they are attached on the skin. So they are found on all segments except the first two. First and second. So first, second and the last one which has the anal opening. So in all segments on the skin which we call the integument there are these nephridia which are found. And all of them they open out. That means if this is the skin then here would be the opening of this nephridio pore. That means they eliminate or remove the waste directly outside the body. And that is where they are known as ectonephric. Ectonephric means they remove the waste outside the body. Remove waste outside the body. That means they open on the skin and they remove it completely outside. That's why they are called ectonephric. The second type of nephridia which are found in earthworms are known as septal nephridia. This was integumentary, these are septal. We know that in case of earthworms body, the complete body is divisible and there are these kind of septa which divide the body into compartments. 
So these nephridia are present on either side of the septa. That means they would be on this side also and this side also. But they start from the 15th segment. So suppose if this is the 15th segment, on this septum it would be present only on one side, then 16th segment on both the sides, 17 on both the sides and so on. So these are found from 15th segment to last. And they are found on either side of the septa. On either side of the septa. Except for the 15th one. 15th septum it is going to be present only on the only on one side which is facing towards the 16th segment. And they collect the waste from again the body fluid and they pour this waste into elementary canal. That means this nitrogenous waste is not directly being put out of the body. They are known as enteronephric. So enteronephric. They collect the waste from the body fluid and put it into the elementary canal. So waste is collected and poured into digestive system. That means they are enteronephric. The third type of nephridia which are found in earthworms are known as pharyngeal nephridia. Pharyngeal nephridia. And as the name tells us, they are found around pharynx. These nephridia, they are found in clusters. In clusters. And the segments are in fourth, fifth and sixth segments. And the reason why these segments, because this is the region where the pharynx is present. So around the pharynx, these nephridia, they are present in clusters. And they are found in fourth, fifth and sixth segment. They also collect the waste from the body cavity and pour this waste into elementary canal. That means they are also enteronephric. So out of three nephridia, one is ectonephric, which is going to pour the waste material or throw the waste material directly outside the body. Whereas two, that is septal and pharyngeal ones are enteronephric. They are going to collect the waste from the body and pour that waste into elementary canal and then it gets eliminated from the body. So in earthworm, we divide these uh, nephridia, classify them on the basis of their location also plus where are they going to pour that waste material inside the body or outside only one is ectonephric that is the integumentary one and integumentary are found in all the segments all over the skin except the first and the second uh, segment anterior first and second and last segment which is the anal segment now in case of neris Neris also has nephridia and all the nephridia are ectonephric. So we can write one special thing about neris. All nephridia are ectonephric. In leech, there are different types again and they are based on the size also. So when we talk of these uh, now, any leads, we talk of nephridia as the excretory material. Now the substance which is getting eliminated. Now the substance, if they are in their aquatic mode of life, then it is going to be ammonia. So we would write that they eliminate ammonia in aquatic conditions. That means if we are talking of earthworm, if earthworm is living in an area where there is plenty of water, then it is going to eliminate ammonia. But if there is limitation of water, then it becomes urea or ureotelic in limited water conditions. 
so their elimination of waste also depends on availability of water so they are monotelic if sufficient water is available they are ureotelic when the water is not available in plenty and the structure is the nephridium simple structure there's a tube basically which is highly coiled there is an opening which is lined it is a funnel like opening lined with cilia anterior tube that is neck region is also lined with cilia so that the fluid can be conducted and at the end of that tube there is an opening which is called nephridiopore it may open directly on the skin so that the waste can be eliminated outside or it can open and make a common duct and finally open into the alimentary canal or digestive system so that this waste can be eliminated with the undigested food so structure one thing which we have remember but we have to remember is that this loop which we have drawn is not simple loop it is a highly coiled tube which is present in nephridia so this is what is seen in case of annelids now the next uh, group which we would take up would be arthropods